DJ Wagner, the number one recruit in the 2023 class, announced his college decision on Monday, and he made one team in the Bluegrass State very happy. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, the only daily national college hoop show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you for making us your first listen or your first watch every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. It is Champions Classic Day, Michigan State, Kentucky, Duke, and Kansas. We're going to check in on Duke and their preparations, but first, we have to unpack DJ Wagner's commitment. Well, we sure didn't plan to start the show this way today, but yesterday on Monday, we got the news that DJ Wagner has officially committed to Kentucky. We got some hints along the way about a month ago, but man, we have to start the show with this news. So of course, we turn to our guy, Jason Jordan, Sports Illustrated's Director of Basketball Recruiting. And we want to remind you that these days, every potential new hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. So man, Jason, this was a fun recruitment. It's yeah. been really back and forth in the bluegrass state, Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky, Louisville. There's connections to both programs. Man, what what have you been seeing and hearing about DJ Wagner? Well, you know, I mean, it it's funny, man. It, it's so this is what we talk about all the time with recruitment, hour to hour. I mean, three months ago, you might have said, "Oh, he, you know, he's, he's close with his granddad. He may be going there," and then, you know, no, I would say in the last month and a half, maybe two months, it really did kind of turn all the way blue. You know. Um, <laughs> that red stuff just died down really quick, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, so, and let's you know. say the table for those, for those who aren't aware, as Jason's saying here, uh, this summer, I remember people basically saying Wagner to yeah. Louisville is like a done deal. There's yeah. a, the connection there with Kenny Payne taking over. There's family connections. Grandpa yeah. Milt is hired as the director of player yeah. development right. at Kentucky. His father, Dewan played for coach Cal at Memphis. And so you got those connections on both ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and at some point, maybe that was the case. You know, I would say that me, me talking to DJ, I talked to DJ a couple of times this summer and, you know, he was very adamant that he said the only thing that I, do, I don't know if it's all <laughs> at the time, he said, you know, his grand grand pop is what he calls him. Grand pop. We don't talk about recruitment. The only thing he said is you make the best decision for you. I yeah. said, did you say anything else? Did you talk about you know, that he's a literally nothing else. Interesting. He never talked about recruiting. Yeah, he's Interesting. Not, it's my granddad. I'm not talking about all that stuff, right? And Which so, seems, um, yeah, keep yeah. going. Sorry. No, I mean, I, I, I believe him. You know, yeah. I think at that, after that, maybe, you know, it's been a couple months since I talked to him, uh, him directly. But yeah, I, I could buy that. I could buy that. And it seems like it usually doesn't go that way. Like when when the family connection, when somebody's hired to the staff, usually yeah. that is a no brit like with Cade yeah. Cunningham to Oklahoma State or things like that. When somebody's hired, here comes Buddy following up in recruitment. But that was not the case in yeah. this scenario. Does it seem like more often than not, from what you've seen, if a family member is hired, that's where the young man's going? <laughs> let, me, let me take it a step further. If, if the young man doesn't come there <laughs> – you just notice that somehow they're not on the website anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they know that that's what the caveat, like, listen, you know, hey, you know we're going to give you this money. And, you know, uh, but uh, he better come. So, you know, like when people were talking about with Cade, they were like, I don't know, man. Cade might not go. It's like, dude, let me tell you something. He's going, he's <laughs> going to Oklahoma State, you yeah. know. So, um, yeah, that this is different. This is different. This is different. Um, now, granted, you know, Milk. Milt is milk at Louisville. So that's a little bit different. But, you know, I do think I, obviously they hired him to incentivize the, the move to the red, you know, so they didn't get it done. Um, and, yeah, that that even with his dad playing for Calipari, um, that's still a black guy, still a black guy. There's no way, no way around it. It's like, oh, but his dad played. Yeah, but we, you know, we hired you. You're a legend here. And. And then they haven't started off great, you know. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a black guy. And today hurt. Today hurt. 
they they, they may not they may say but well, we backed off but, but no that's not, come on you gotta relax. And, and that on top of it's already been a miserable start to the season for Louisville yeah, exactly. losing two games starting with Bellarmine yeah. I mean that's just, and the exhibition to Lenore Ryan it is not a good day to be a Louisville Cardinal now yeah. Jason there was an indication about a month ago October 10th DJ signs an NIL deal with Nike. For those who don't know, Kentucky's a Nike school. Louisville is an Adidas school. Was yeah. the writing on the wall at that point already? It was, but I had back channel conversations. You know, we love the back channel. And we had back, I had a couple of back channel conversations where they were just like, hey man, it's just this is just a good deal. You know, and it's like not necessarily I even tweeted out, uh, you know, necessarily, you know, they, but more times than not, and you know. It's safe to say, oh, it's done now. Yeah, I can tell you when he did it, it was not done. Okay, you know, I can tell you that. Um, but you know, in in retro, I mean, yes, it, it it does help to stay. You stay brand. You're true to your brand more times than not. So, but um, yeah, it, that probably was a decent indicator. You know, given that it's probably sixty forty at that time anyway. You know, yeah. You can definitely tip your scale that way, for sure. Yeah. Well, now we turn to look at what this means for Kentucky's 2023 recruiting class because, I mean, my goodness, you've already got Justin Edwards. Most people see him as, like, number two or, you know, right up there. Aaron Bradshaw, Rob Dillingham. You add in DJ Wagner, and from everything I've seen, you've got four of the top ten recruits in this class now all on the same thing for Coach Calipari. What does this mean for uh, next season for Kentucky. Yeah, so I wrote um, on Monday that it could potentially give them the best backcourt in the country next season. I mean, you, you know, North Carolina is no stranger to this, right? In North Carolina, they got the best backcourt this year. It could be Kentucky next year, and they could be two wet behind the ears freshmen leading the charge. <laughs> right. And I like the fact that it's two point guards. Now, people would say, oh, Robert Dillingham's a combo guard. Oh, he's a point guard, right? Um, but he's a really good scoring point guard, probably the best in show. At, in that lane, right? So I think, um, given now they, they they already have a great rapport, they're already really good friends. Um, both of them have extensive, um, extensive, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Extensive time sharing the spotlight with another elite guard. So Rob with Aiden Holloway at CP3. And then uh, DJ on USA Basketball with the great Boogie Flan yeah. and Jeremy Fears. So, um, and they both settle into those roles really well. They're not, they are alphas, but I think for the greater good, they settle into being the most dominant backcourt, right? So a lot of people thought Aiden Holloway and Robert Dillingham may have been the most dominant backcourt in the Nike EYBL this summer. Hey, I mean, it's hard to argue that. Um, so. I think for the greater good, they they can mesh well together. I know some people think that they're gonna it's too it's where the shots coming from because they're both ball dominant guards. Robert Dillingham is really good off the ball, yeah, really good off the ball. I mean, you uh, North Carolina was recruiting everybody thought he was going to go there. NC State you know, obviously decommitted from there, but um, you know, I think they're all. How can I say they're in this day and age? You, you're you're brand conscious, and there's no better brand than winning. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, you know, being a, and then they'll have a lot. They're going to be a traveling all star team next year. They're going to have a lot of hype. But, you know, and there's nothing new for Kentucky, a lot of expectations. So um, having that potential to be the best backcourt in the, that's, there's going to be a stigma attached to that. You know, um, they're, they're both of them are rock stars. I mean, Rob is connected to Kanye, which may or may not be a good thing to say. <laughs> <You know? laughs> maybe he'll he'll be quiet, and then you know maybe that'll be cool again next year. You know how we did. You know it's how the world works. <laughs> so um, you know they have a lot of hype attached to their names. Rob, Rob, he's like a a highlight legend, right? He started off the season at overtime before he transferred there, and he was. If you've seen that highlight, I mean it's insane. And this is stuff he was doing all summer. So I think. Um, the more likely, and I wrote this, the more likely uh, scenario for them is whoever gets the rebound, who gets the outlight pass. That's the point guard on that position. On that possession. But I think more dominantly, I think DJ will probably be the, the lead guard and they'll let Rob just kind of be. I think he's at his best when he's in attack mode. Um, 
for you know playmaking for himself and his teammates. So it's scary, man. I and they're both point guards. They both our IQ is off the charts. Both capable scorers from all three levels. But I think Rob probably an even better scorer. The clip is kind of more rangy. He has more like a Steph Curry ish, uh, Allen Iverson type game, so he could play off the ball a little bit better. Um, but yeah, great problems, great problems, great like, problems, and great a problem problems. that Coach Cal is certainly uh, a problem. Coach Cal is no stranger to yeah. working with highly, highly talented teams. Yeah. He knows how to rein these guys in and bring them together for the greater good of what you said, yeah. winning. That is the ultimate goal. Can Coach Cal finally pick up that second national championship? According to Jason, he's going to have an opportunity to potentially have the best backcourt in the nation next year with two freshmen point guards can't wait to see when the si 99 comes out what that's looking like and all of those jason jordan as always thank you so much for your insight more to come in the days ahead about dj wagner and this loaded kentucky recruiting class duke is once again loaded but for the first time in decades there's no coach k on the sidelines how are things going with coach shire in his first year we'll check in in just a moment but first this episode is brought to you by simply safe did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries, package thefts, they spike all over the country? So that's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so more families can feel safe and secure and have greater peace of mind this holiday season. Here's why I love it. I do everything like smart home in my home. And so the ability to monitor it all from my phone makes me so happy. Alexa basically runs my house and now I can see Simply Safe in the same way. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that threats are real so they can prioritize the police response to your house. So don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. It's their biggest discount of the year, so don't you miss out. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Join now on Locked on College Basketball by the host of Locked on Duke Blue Devils, Mr. J.J. Jackson. J.J., Duke now, two games into the season, runaway victories over Jacksonville, South Carolina, Upstate. What's the feeling around the Duke program about how Coach Shire has handled the offseason and the early parts of the regular season? Best time of the year, Isaac, that Duke basketball is back, that we've seen two games played already, and the vibes are outstanding in Durham. So many people are excited that he's taken over this program, and it's almost like this sense of a finality in mm -hmm. that we knew Shire would be Coach K's successor over a year ago. That decision was announced before Coach K's final season as a head coach, and so tons of talk, tons of speculation. What's his coaching staff going to look like? What are these first couple of recruiting classes going to look like? Well, he signed back-to-back -back number one classes in the country. That's a pretty good way to start <laughs> your coaching career. And now the fact that we're actually getting to see games played with him out there on the sideline, it's just been outstanding, a sigh of relief, a breath of fresh air. Uh, I run out of ways to describe it. It's just absolutely amazing to see that it's happening and that basketball's back for the Duke Blue Devils. Absolutely. And, and as you referenced, these, I mean, these recruiting classes are ridiculous. The, the 23 class, another ridiculous one, maybe trumped now by Kentucky with the DJ Wagner news. We'll have to wait and see how things play out with that. But, but this year's class loaded. Now, no Derek Whitehead so far in the first two games of the season. Derek Lively was able to come off the bench and play 14 in the second game against SC Upstate, uh, the ACC preseason rookie of the year. What, what's the expected progression and timeline for these two guys working their way into game shape? Yeah, really good news that, uh, that we saw Derek Lively get to play against Upstate this past Friday, and I would expect his playing time to continue moving forward throughout the year. Uh, he had just four points in those 14 minutes, but was kind of all over the floor, really active. His four points came on two dunks on back-to-back -back possessions, one on a nice pick and roll with Jeremy Roach, and then one on a leak out 
where he was able to get out to the opposite end and slam it home. So I think he continues to make incredible progress. I think, honestly, by the time Thanksgiving comes and goes, we won't be paying much attention to Derek Lively's injury whatsoever because he'll just be healthy and ready to go in a mainstay in this Duke basketball team. Derek Whitehead, on the other hand, we still await his return and his debut as a Duke Blue Devil. It feels as though Thanksgiving would be the earliest timeline that we see Derek play. Duke is also going to be out uh, in Portland at one of the Phil Knight events. And the goal is for loaded field. No kidding. The goal (laughs) is for him to be able to play in those events, but it might not be the case. He's dealing with a foot fracture that he had surgically repaired. And uh, a lot of people thought he'd be back by the first week. There hasn't really been any setbacks or anything like that. I think Duke is just being extra cautious as is Derek Whitehead, because let's keep in mind, Isaac, he is a projected top five pick right. and has a lot of really good basketball days ahead of him. Yeah. Well, man, excited to get both these guys fully going. Obviously, like you said, it was great to see Lively and can't wait to see him continue get up to speed. Would love to have Whitehead going up in Portland. I know Gonzaga is in that same half of the bracket and would love to see those two square off in the finals. Now, ahead of the 2018-19 season, all the attention for Duke was was really focused on R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish, with some guy named Zion Williamson kind of getting third third tier to those two guys. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, we obviously know what the order should have been for that. Similar to this year with Lively, with Whitehead, getting the majority of the news, the headlines, who would you say, J.J., is this year's Zion candidate of the other three big-time freshmen between Tyrese Proctor, Mark Mitchell, or Kyle Filipowski? Yeah, great question. And I think you look back at that 2019 uh, Duke basketball season in particular, and you're right, the NBA draft order, kind of looking back on it, kind of dictated how we view those Duke basketball players. If you were to do the same for the three freshmen not named Lively the second or Whitehead, Uh, Mark Mitchell has really been impressive in these first couple of games for Duke, but I might even offer Tyrese Proctor as an option, Isaac. This is a guy who reclassed a late addition to the Duke basketball team for this upcoming season. He played at the NBA Global Academy in Australia, has played really good basketball uh, in his prep career, and is someone that Duke is really excited to get, has such a good and creative game offensively. For the Blue Devils, I don't know that you've got that Zion-level hype with any of these guys, but I'm telling you, Mark Mitchell has turned heads so far, but I think Tyrese Proctor might be that bet moving forward. Mm -hmm. Man, it, it, what, it's just crazy how Duke yeah. continues to bring in this level of talent. Now, despite all the headlines for all these freshmen, it's returning point guard Jeremy Roach that really is going to be the glue that holds this whole thing together in John Shire's first season. Why and how is he so important to the success of the 22-23 Duke Blue Devils? Well, one, he's one of only two players who played any minutes whatsoever last year for Duke. The other is Jalen Blakes, who's going into his sophomore season and has been really impressive uh, from expectations through these first two games of the year. So experience alone is a big factor for Duke. And I know we'll get to the Champions Classic matchup a little bit later. That's coming up tonight. But, I mean, Roach is the only guy who's played in big-time, meaningful games in a Duke basketball jersey. He's a guy that going into the year has gotten preseason all ACC buzz on that first team. He's getting all American honors, preseason awards to be on the watch out for. And uh, look, anytime your point guard is in a steady and comfortable spot, your basketball team kind of follows along. And that's going to be the role of Jeremy Roach this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, And especially how much that becomes true once we get to March, like those teams with experienced and talented, both backcourts are the ones that continue to seem to move forward through the rounds of the NCAA tournament. Interested to watch how yeah. Jeremy Roach can codify all these freshmen coming together. And Isaac, I'll add that you look at last year's Duke squad in the NCAA tournament when the games matter the most in so many ways, Jeremy Roach was the most productive and most important player for Duke. And that's coming off of a team that had five NBA draft picks, <laughs> five of them between the number one overall pick and Paulo Bancaro, Mark Williams, or Mark Williams, uh, AJ Griffin, Wendell Moore Jr., and Trevor Keels. Jeremy Roach was the most productive guy in the tournament, and when Duke needed clutch buckets 
down the stretch, he was the player that delivered. He's carrying that confidence over into this season, and he is the lone captain for the Duke Blue Devil squad. He's going to be the guy setting the tone the whole year. All right, folks, keep your eyes out for Mr. Jeremy Roach. All right, JJ, one more question before we carry on. Fill in the blank. Year one for John Shire is successful if what? Yeah, this is a really hard question to answer, Isaac. And I've talked about it a lot on Locked On Blue Devils because I think expectations were shifted a little bit when that school in Chapel Hill that you might know a thing or two about had Hubert Davis go all the way to the Final Four in his first season as a head basketball coach. I think expectations uh, for Shire in year one, quite simply, are to keep Duke basketball a relevant commodity in college basketball as a needle mover in the sport. You're replacing a Hall of Famer in Mike Krzyzewski. That's really difficult to do, but Coach K has done a great job building that Duke brand, building the brotherhood, bringing top recruits onto campus. And if Duke can continue to be a top 10 team throughout the season, I think John Shire has done a heck of a job in his first year. Man, absolutely. And it, I cannot imagine the weight that's on him, but it seems like he is handling that very well. And we will keep our eyes peeled to Coach Shire's success going forward. So as JJ alluded to, Duke has their first big test of the season tonight against the reigning national champion, Kansas Jayhawks. What should we expect? We're going to find out more from that about JJ coming up in just a second. But first, let me tell you about Bet Online, which is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and, and get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball, soccer, and esports, we've got it all at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So, Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. Okay, so JJ, Champions Classic, Tuesday night, Gamebridge Fieldhouse. How many different names has that place been? <laughs> the home of the Indiana Pacers. We start with Kentucky and Michigan State at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Got the next CFP reveal in between games. And then the nightcap, the game we're here to talk about, Duke in Kansas, two team, half of last year's Final Four going at it. First off, JJ, how odd is it to be discussing Kansas versus Duke, Blue Devils versus Jayhawks, but we don't have two guys named Mike Krzyzewski or Bill Self on the sideline? Incredibly strange. I, I, you know, I, I don't know that we would have envisioned this scenario a few years ago when you're seeing this matchup. The Champions Classic has been going uh, for nearly a decade at this point, featuring these same four schools every single year. And you think about these four schools and they've got Titans as head coaches in the college basketball world with Calipari at Kentucky, Tom Izzo at Michigan State, and then Coach K at Duke and Bill Self at Kansas. So the fact that two of those four schools are going to have different guys on the sidelines, <laughs> sure. what in the world? Like this must be an alternate reality yes. that we're, we're living in. But Isaac, no, that, that's actually what is happening and that's called college basketball here in 2022. Oof, it's going to be crazy. For those who aren't aware, Coach Bill Self is serving a four-game suspension. This is game three tonight for the Champions Classic. One more, and then he will be back as Kansas heads to the battle for Atlantis, where they start off against NC State. Now, as to the game itself, JJ, on paper, as I look at things, I feel like Duke is the more talented roster, but Kansas is the more experienced roster, although they themselves have an incredible freshman in Grady Dick, one of the great names in college basketball, has a great start to his collegiate career as well. How do you see this game being played out? Yeah, I think defense is going to be important for both of these teams early in the year in matchups like these. And looking at the history of the Champions Classic, it's been who's making shots at the end of the day that walks away a winner. Because for so many of these teams, they've got premier freshmen who are playing on the biggest stage. In years past, and quite honestly, if this wasn't an election year, I think we would have seen this game played last Tuesday right. for the first game of the season for all of these teams like it's been in the past. Right. The benefit this year, that election day did fall when it did, is that they were able to play a couple of games for these freshmen to get their debuts out of the way in order to play. Jalen Wilson is the guy I think that's really important in this matchup for Kansas. 
much like Jeremy Roach is that player for Duke. My question when looking at this again, though, is on the defensive end, who's really going to step their game up? And I got to tell you, this Duke basketball team has been excellent on the defensive end of the floor so far. Against Upstate, they only gave up 38 points total in a 40-minute college basketball game. I know that people are going to bring up the level of competition, but still, still. 38 points in a 40-minute basketball game against a Division One opponent. That's really impressive Was what Duke was able to do defensively. And like any young team, if your defense is there, Duke's got enough talented shot makers to figure it out on the offensive end, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of people are going to have known Duke from last year and to say, well, they lost uh, you know, their best shot blocker, who you talked about in Mark Williams as a draft pick, the back end of that defense. For those who haven't seen either of Duke's first two games, what is what are they doing for that defense to be so, ex- uh, excuse me, ex- spectacular? Yeah, I, I think the ball pressure has been outstanding for Duke on the defensive end with Jeremy Roach at the top. I mentioned Tyrese Proctor. He's really struggled offensively so far with his shot through these first two games, but he's been getting after it on the defensive end. Duke was able to bring in Jacob Grandison from Illinois, who has been an added bonus on the wing defensively for Duke. And Jalen Blake's another name I mentioned earlier in his sophomore season, one of only two players back from last year's team, has really picked it up and hounded people aggressively defensively. Duke's got a Swiss Army knife in Mark Mitchell who's been out there guarding anybody that he needs to and has done a great job of that. And so I just think how quick Duke has been defensively has been the biggest takeaway so far. I'm really excited to see what Lively can turn into, though, as the rim protector for Duke because of injury, we haven't had an opportunity to see exactly how good he can be. Yeah, you wonder if this is the moment on the national stage where Mr. Lively can really... I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Yes, absolutely. Now, JJ, as you said, usually this these this uh, double header usually kicks off the college basketball season, and so we kind of take the results of it and the individual performances with a little grain of salt. Uh, I remember a couple years ago, Tyler Harrow absolutely went off for Kentucky in when they played, and then you know throughout the stretch of the season, you didn't see necessarily all of that all the time. So some of these things, you say, okay, that I can see that being a long term thing. That's reality. Some things you can see like, ah, eh, that's just a one game, small sample size uh, result. How do you interpret the the takeaways that we can legitimately pull out of these games tonight in the Champions Classic? Yeah, so young on the season, it is kind of uh, easy to to make kind of those quick reactions to the product that you see out on the floor and how that's going to translate the rest of the season. And that's just not fair because it's so early into the year and so many different things can change between now and March. However, we do know that each and every year in the Champions Classic, these are four of the greatest programs and brands in right. college basketball. Right. They're built for events like this. They're built for the national TV audience. They love playing on the biggest of stages, and it's games like these at neutral sites, might I also add, where the NCAA tournament is played and championships are won on neutral floors like this. That's where you really see the best performances, and from those performances, I think Duke and other teams build a lot of confidence from it. You mentioned the strong play of Tyler Hero in games like this. I would also remind folks that we have seen outstanding performances This is the second time we're going to bring up that Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and Cam Reddish team. And their first game of college basketball, Isaac, against Kentucky, Duke scored 118 points and beat Kentucky by over 30 in a Champions Classic game like this. So we have seen amazing performances. And looking back on that team, yeah, that was a really good Duke basketball team that went on to win plenty of games in the ACC and made it all the way to the Elite Eight. So this game, in many ways, can help you get an understanding of how good these teams are going to be at the end of the year. Ah, great stuff, JJ. We are so excited, folks, to see these games tonight. Again, 7 o'clock ESPN kicking off with Kentucky-Michigan State. Then the CFP next week reveal we'll have on there, followed by the nightcap of Duke and Kansas. Going to be great stuff. Andy Patton will be with you on the show tomorrow to recap it all. Thanks so much for making Locked On College Basketball your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. 
biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and of course, the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and anywhere else you get podcasts. Please make sure to subscribe. For those of you watching, smash the like button, leave some comments on what you're looking forward to in these games. Really appreciate you diving in with us for Jason Jordan and for JJ Jackson. I'm Isaac Shade. Until tomorrow, peace.